Hi, we're in the 16th Horasis in Yamit over here in Athens and I have the pleasure of being with Anu Chahan, the founder of Yellow Sapphire Technologies. Welcome, Anu. It's such a pleasure having you. you here. Thank you so much, Trisha. Fantastic. Great having you here. How are you liking Athens so far? Oh, it's a beautiful place. Absolutely loved it. The moment you land at the airport, you realize how gorgeous the place is. Yeah. Beautiful seas, beautiful skies. Absolutely love it. Fantastic, fantastic. And have you been enjoying the food? Oh, absolutely. Who doesn't love Mediterranean food? Oh, absolutely incredible. So tell me, Anuj, you are now a third time founder, right? And what was that brainchild? What was that moment where you went, okay, I need to start this company? So Yellow Sapphire Technology started off when my co-founder and I, we wanted to take a break. We wanted to sort of see where the market is headed. We, mm. And then it, during that break, of course, we wanted to give back to the startup community. We wanted to pass on the knowledge that our mentors gave to us. So to us, the idea was, hey, let's advise other founders. Mm. However, that's where the realization that, all right, oh, the founders that we are advising, they need more than just advice. They need some actual help in implementing those stuff. Mm -hmm. So Yellow Sapphire started off with the vision of helping first time founders implement stuff, help them out in the early days of their journey. But slowly as COVID came in, we evolved into working more with corporates, helping them cut down some red tape and of course, focusing more on digital transformation for the SMEs. Yeah. Uh, that remains one of the key focus area for us till this date. I like that, by founders, for founders. Absolutely. That's uh, lovely. That's, that's what giving back to the community is all about at the yeah. end of the day, right? We are very fortunate that we had some amazing mentors that mm. taught us over the years. And as founders, it's our responsibility to make sure that that learning gets passed on. Fantastic. So, yeah, in that journey, uh, somewhere along the way, we went on from working just with corporates to then working with, uh, with government, yeah. from founders to the people. At the end of the day, every founder wants to make lives better for the people around the world. So that was the eventual goal. Fantastic. And then that's what we are doing right now. So, so tell me a little bit more, because we hear quite a lot about the DPI initiative. So tell, tell us a little bit more uh, about that. So DPI or Digital Public Infrastructure is a wave that's been picked up or, or an initiative that started off with the Indian government. They wanted to build the infrastructure for the people that can be used by SMEs, mm. by small time players yeah. to give them a level playing field. So more all, it's very all encompassing. Absolutely. Not for just the corporates, but really for uh, for a smaller uh, business, uh, medium size as well. As the word suggests, it's digital public infrastructure. So any government process mm. that's currently manual or paperwork intensive, an initiative by the government to digitize it, to save people's time, to improve the overall experience and actually give back a few days to the people that yeah. they typically spend in running around errands <laughs> for going for a driver's license yeah. or uh, applying for a new business license, yeah. giving back, giving back, uh, giving them back that time and adding some transparency into the process. And as a tech founder, I'm, I'm really curious, right? Because India's journey, especially when it when it's come to you know the public uh, uh, public technologies, it's really moved leaps and bounds because it went from quite manual to over the last few years everything is extremely extremely digitized what are some of and, and i think you've met, you've mentioned uh, the pros of that how did that happen and what do you see the next leap to be so i think this was initiative by the smart people that are actually running the bureaucracy right now especially niti ayog who understood that technology is the future we gotta make sure that we bring in transparency any manual effort has chances for an error. Hmm. And especially with COVID, the idea of, oh, we need to be digitized and we need it yesterday was the key. That's where the effort took rocket fuel and then it just went on to next level. Yeah. But that's been the initiative by the Indian government for a very long time anyway, which ways. UPI, uh, the digitized banking system, yeah. 
that's miles ahead of any other country around the world. Absolutely, it's almost like a, it's a, India has become the leading face of what public uh, uh, technology looks like, would you say? Absolutely, absolutely. By all means, it's a case study on how 1.4 billion can have their life digitized yeah. and the process become more transparent. It's funny to think that just a few years ago, one would have to go to a driver's uh, li driving authority to get a driver's license, but yeah. now that entire process has been completely digitized. It's uh, entirely online process, so be it applying for a driver's license or getting their address changed. You don't have to visit any location, you don't have to visit any office. Even if you are submitting an application, just mm -hmm. submit it online, take your driver's test, and then you get your driver's license at home. Fantastic. It's unimaginable, yet at the same time, completely imaginable because this is what it's you would happening. have wanted. It's, it's actually happening. <laughs> exactly. This is what yeah. you would have wanted the 21st century to yeah. be. So this is when you can officially say, oh, we're, we're there. there. We're there. We're, we're, there. We're, now Absolutely. we're now there. Absolutely. And, and what is the role? Because, I mean, you know, the, uh, the talent that we have in India, because one, there's one thing, uh, you know, which is doing things, uh, you know, having that vision and executing that vision. But there's also another thing to be said about the time taken, because people could have a vision and execute it, but implementations, as we know, take a very long time Absolutely. as well. What do you think is a key factor that is contributed? Is it the fact that there's a lot of young tech talent uh, that's there? Is it uh, the fact that you know, you've got more and more founders uh, that are there to imagine, uh, to envision uh, uh, you know, the, uh, the sort of the future of tomorrow? What are some of the factors that have allowed this to become a reality? I think it's a mix of a lot of factors because you have young people that are yes. actually getting a college degree, they're going in for the education, making sure that they are able to secure their future. But then there is also a new push towards experimenting, giving people a chance. Mm. And finally, of course, we are not, over the years, all the effort, all the reforms are finally showing the results, right? Mm. We are finally getting to a stage where people no longer have to worry about the quintessential 90s thing of, yeah. oh, I gotta worry about my food, house, and then my security. Having that safety net is a sort We're of what's up the allowed. Maslow hierarchy. Absolutely. Yes. So yeah, it's it's that opportunity now being available. Yeah. And the again rocket fueled growth that and the, the talent economy, being available. Absolutely. That yeah. that remains the key. India remains one demography which is massively English speaking. That is very westernized, very global. Mm. And that remains their key advantage compared to places like China, yeah. where you still don't have a huge population that speaks English. So that remains the key. Educated, talented, young workforce who's ready for the global market. And my final question to you would be, for Yellow Sapphire Technologies, what's the role that you see your company, that you see your team, your talent playing in that future of, uh, of India? We are a government technology solutions provider. So we work with government. We make mm -hmm. sure that any time a uh, government takes initiative to improve lives of their public, we are there to help them out in that journey. So as Yellow Sapphire, I speak on behalf of our team that our goal is to make sure that while we are still a small team compared to a lot of big IT companies out there, yeah. we, we give our 100%, we make sure that the goal that every founder starts a company with to make lives better stays true to our heart and anytime we're building something, we make sure that we build it right, we build it secure and we build it for the people. Fantastic, thank you very much and I absolutely love some of the things that you said by founders, for founders, changing the face of India's government technology. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Such Asha. a pleasure. Thanks.